ludicrous as it sounds, the news that Angelina Jolie is seeking a reconciliation with estranged husband Brad Pitt, three years after she filed for divorce, could provide us with a salutary lesson. For it comes in the same week that reforms to our own divorce laws to make ending a marriage less acrimonious were announced. Yes, Brangelina are a stupendously silly Hollywood couple, they split in hysterical haste after Joe Lee accused Pitt of drunkenly yelling at their son Maddox aboard their private jet. We don't know what really lay behind the breakup that's devastated their six children, or whether Joe Lee's hopes of a reconciliation are even true. What we do know, however, is that countless couples divorce in haste, only to regret it years later. I applaud some of the changes in the proposed reforms. But my deep concern is they'll make a hasty divorce far easier because they reduce the time it takes to finalize a separation, if only one partner wants it, from two years to less than six months. The point is that most marriages end as a result of adultery. And the desolation, despair and anger of the wronged spouse takes years, not months to resolve. Coming to terms with the reasons for the affair, if it can be understood or forgiven at all, certainly can't be done in six months. Looking back at my own divorce, when my then-husband said his affair was a cry for help, I was blinded by self-righteousness and vilified him for what I saw only as his betrayal. It was years before I accepted that my working ten hours a day, six days a week, didn't leave room for me being his loving young wife. I never once considered why he might have sought solace in the arms of another woman. I never thought for a moment that I might have been equally culpable for the end of our marriage. I was wrong. And that galls me to this day, even though I accept we were never meant to be together for life. The blind fury you feel eases with time, and this gives marriages a better chance. Sting once hinted at this when he said the secret of his 27-year marriage to Trudy Styler was that they never wanted to get divorced at the same time. In other words, time overcame one side's bitterness. Perhaps this is what Angelina now realizes. If so, she's giving us a stark warning about the very real dangers of this push for easier divorces. Emma's tough role Clever of the makers of The Crown to choose the unknown actress Emma Curran to play Princess Diana the seventh to take on this iconic role. They didn't make the same mistake as the producers of the 2013 film Diana, starring glamorous Naomi Watts who'd conquered hearts in King Kong. No one was convinced by her portrayal of the People's Princess and Diana fans kept wondering when the giant gorilla would storm on set to rescue her. But one observation. Emma looks scarily like Jodie Foster. So will we be on the edge of our seats in The Crown? waiting for Hannibal Lecter? Endearing that despite 23 million album sales and ahead of her return on Britain's Got Talent Tonight, Susan Boyle says she's so rich now she can afford luxuries like cottage pie. Yet I'm still puzzled as to who these album buyers are. The only person I know who had one news to blast out Subbo at 10am on our holidays to get his hungover guests out of bed. We'd rush to turn off that awful din. Forget Brexit. News that Grand Tour pet rawhead Jeremy Clarkson has taken up cycling, he dismisses bikes as children's toys, surely marks the end of Britain as we know it. The Betrayal of Marina Very telling that while the establishment wanted to hang Marina out to dry, it was a fellow prisoner who gave him hope. The male serialization of Alexander Blackman's memoir this week revealed how he isolated himself out of shame after beginning his life sentence for killing a Taliban terrorist. Then an inmate barged into his cell and said, You are that Marine fellow, aren't you, not some pedophile, as they'd suspected from his solitary behavior. Shameful, isn't it, that criminals had more compassion for Marine than our politicians, military top brass and judiciary?